If you're like me, who also picked up the 2020 iPad Pro 11 inch several months ago, and on April, you heard the news that the latest and greatest and most powerful 2021 iPad Pro is now officially released. And it actually has a true Thunderbolt port down here as well. And it has a couple other nifty goodies, like some interesting hardware in its front facing camera and so much more. So now you're probably left wondering, is it even worse trading in like your 2020 iPad to get the latest 2021 iPad Pro? Let's go ahead and compare the two and see if it's even worth considering doing that. So luckily for you, me, I happen to have my hands on both of these. And comparing the two, honestly, side by side, they look 100% identical. There's really no way you could tell the two apart as it shares the same edge to edge design like the previous generation iPad Pro. These two happen to be the space gray. Silver option is also available, but even with the space gray body, the color between these two are 100% identical. And yes, both of these are the 11 inch model. I personally prefer going with the 11 inch because I don't want anything larger than a laptop in terms of a portable tablet. Although the Pro with the new iPad Pro 12.9, if you go with that model, is that you get the new very bright liquid retina XDR with a new mini LED display hardware, which is able to get up to 1600 nits, which is insanely bright with HDR, which is ideal for watching movies and such on the go. But that's only available for the 12.9. Similarities, I mean, both have Face ID with true depth camera. Either way, both are still using a liquid retina display for the 11 inch, which has a rating of 264 PPI. It has a anti-reflection coating, which means you could work just fine, even outdoors in a direct sunlight. You should be able to still identify and see the screen just fine. It has a P3 wide color and supports true tone of course. Both of them do have a 12 megapixel camera in the rear and a 12 megapixel ultra wide with that LiDAR sensor right underneath. It does support a two times optical zoom and also both of them have a five times digital zoom with smart HDR photo. Both can record 4K at 24 FPS and you can set it to 60 FPS. And both support slow motion at 240. And also has support for that interesting audio zoom as well. When you zoom in on an object, it's going to give this zoom audio effect, which iPhones have had previously ever since the iPhone 11s, I believe. It was when they first integrated the iPad Pro. Both of these also support that. Portrait mode, portrait lighting, cinema video, stabilization, 1080p, HD video recording, and emojis, memojis, yeah, it supports it all, including it also has stereo recording. And of course, the microphone on both of these is studio grade, what Apple is calling it. In other words, the microphone on both of these devices are really great. And it will deliver true stereo surround sound as there's four speakers around each corner of both of these iPads perfect when you're watching videos on the go. And in terms of battery life, each of them is labeled and listed to be able to deliver up to 10 hours under a single charge. Other nitty gritty stuff is both are using the latest and greatest Wi-Fi 6 as well as Bluetooth 5. And both are indeed compatible with the smart keyboard, even the last year smart keyboard. You could even use the last year 2020 smart keyboard on the 2021 iPad Pro. I could confirm it right here and you can see it right there. And then the second generation Apple Pencil is also supported on both of them. Now the big key differences is primarily this. The internal chip that's found on the 2020 iPad Pro was the A12Z chip, which at that time was insanely powerful. It also has six gigabytes of RAM and the storage configuration can be config to up to one terabyte. And then weight wise, the 2020 iPad Pro weighs in one pound and 0.6. The 2021, one pound, 0.5 one point difference really but other than that that's basically it now with the new 2021 ipad pro it's equipped with the same chip that's found on apple's latest generation silicone mac computers like this one in the background is a fine example it's powered by that same chip and the storage configuration can be configured to two terabyte double the amount of what was available for the 2020 and get this default Eight gigabytes of RAM is equipped on the 2021, but depending on the configuration, it can get up to 16 gigs. And then of course you get the mini LED display if you go with the 12.9 version iPad Pro. But besides that, that's basically 
the primarily difference in terms of just specs. Now for my overall experience using both of these iPads, the 2020 iPad Pro is still is very powerful. It's still able to launch applications extremely quick. The only times when I see that the M1 is necessary is when you use a lot of apps that require a little bit more power. Other times when I notice a significant performance difference between the internal ship is like the boot up time as a fine example. Here I synchronized the video, I turned on the power on both of these iPads and the M1 2021 was definitely faster just by a couple of seconds. This is a real life footage so I'm really trying to squeeze this clip but there we go. The M1 iPad Pro turned on and two seconds later the 2020. And then doing geeky stuff like running Geekbench, but here you could clearly see the firmware update they're on, the internal specs and all that stuff, and just running the CPU core tests, this was the performance results. It took the M1 iPad Pro a minute and 45 seconds to complete. Meanwhile, meanwhile, the A12Z took about meh, over two minutes, but the Geekbench scores are right there and clearly, Better singles and multi-core, impressive multi-core from the M1 iPad. And both of them can be owned with cellular connection. If you opt for that version, a cellular version is available. Just, it's only the 2021 that actually takes advantage of the latest 5G connectivity network connectivity cellular network connectivity how about that sounds even better so for the best high-end speed the 2021 for your cellular needs now the 2020 ipad does feature a usb-c port but this is just a standard usb-c which works just fine plugging in external hard drives and such dongles and all that good stuff you can even plug it into a monitor if you have the right adapter and then with thunderbolt 3 it does the exact same thing what the USB-C port can do, so plug in monitor and all that stuff. But the advantages here is that you get double the transfer speeds. USB-C can typically go 20 gigabits per second. Thunderbolt 3 allows you to go up to 40. And then in terms of accessories, all the accessories that was I was using on my 2020 iPad Pro are fully compatible on the 2021. So even though there's a very small weight difference, Exterior wise, it's 100% identical as all my previous accessories are fully compatible on it, including the smart keyboard, like I mentioned. So my final thoughts after using both of them, the new upgraded internal features on the 2021 is actually very significant compared to what we received last year on the new iPad Pro. Last year, all we really saw was the LiDAR sensor, which I personally rarely use, even on my iPhone, but the body design was significant during that time, but wasn't really anything that I could really use compared to what's available on the 2021 iPad Pro. I really do like that camera track feature. That thing actually works surprisingly extremely well. I very much appreciate the additional RAM at the same cost as the last year iPad Pro. Having the extra terabyte storage option, the two terabyte can be able to configure it to two terabytes can definitely help people that use this device on the go for work, as well as the 5G cellular connection support. The front facing camera is obviously way better. And the M1 chip is a very nice touch, seeing that a Mac computer processor can now be equipped on something this size. But honestly, most users may not even be able to fully utilize that M1 chip at its full potential. Maybe in the near future, just maybe, we may start seeing full desktop apps finally get added on M1 equipped tablets. And of course, having the option to get that impressive mini display if you opt for the 12.9, that is awesome. But I personally don't want it, nor do I need it because I, again, I don't want a tablet bigger than my laptop. At that point, I'm just gonna carry my laptop. So in conclusion, I'm perfectly fine with the 2020 iPad Pro. The users that I find that will truly benefit going with the 2021 or upgrading from the 2020 to the 2021 is if you're somebody who always is constantly rendering 3D images or do a lot of 4K video exporting on this machine. The 2020 iPad Pro, its chipset was already more than capable to handle all that just fine. But going with the M1, I'm pretty sure a more power hungry user could definitely benefit from using a real desktop 
processor. So in other words, I'm perfectly fine with the 2020, unless I do a lot of FaceTime calls. And that's really the only selling point that I see that will be worth considering to upgrade. There you guys have it. Hope you guys enjoyed this comparison between the previous generation iPad Pro against the newer generation. If you got some good usage information out of this video, I'd greatly appreciate if you could hit that like button as well as get subscribed, especially if you enjoy a lot of tech videos, very similar to this. If you're curious what kind of accessories I have on my iPad, including that decal skin that you see there, you can go ahead and watch this video over there as all those accessories, as I mentioned, are compatible even on the newer generation iPad. And then that video over there, that video is just a video that YouTube is recommending specifically for you. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.